Social media questions for you. At Jonathan M wants to know, what advice do you have for a young entrepreneur without much startup capital? He wants to be an entrepreneur. How does he break in? One of the best kept secrets in America, SCORE, S-C-O-R-E, Service Corps of Retired Executives. I know about in SCORE. In every single city in America. You may not go, notice, that's true. There, S-C-O-R-E, look it up. And go there and you get retired executives from they General help you Mills, for free. from 3M. The cost is free. One of the best kept secrets in America. That's right. I did interviews on about years ago, SCORE. And you go there, and these retired and successful people help you. No charge. Okay. They love doing it because they're retired and they want to be active. At Jim Romano, what does, spirit, does spirituality play a role in success? Well, that's to each his own and to each her own, uh, of course. Every single you know, 7.2 billion people on Earth, and everybody has, a, of course, a different uh, a facet of, of their religion and their spirituality. So... What does it play? And you can look up many successful people. I happen to think a high percentage of people would be, because you have to believe in something. My, uh, our code dear friend, Billy Graham, <laughs> certainly, <laughs> certainly used it for success. Ezekiel Enna Walter on Facebook wants to know, was there any a moment, ever a moment where you gave up all hope? Did you ever give up all hope? And when someone does, what do you do at that point? <laughs> That's, uh, very, that's very difficult. I never really truly gave up hope, but I tell you how I solved my problems. When they struck me for 12 weeks with pickets and I thought I was going bankrupt, when I, I had to go through bankruptcy, my name is on the door. Uh, the way I solved that problem is I just went over to a hospital. The name of the hospital is Shriners Hospital in the Twin Cities, Children's Hospital. And I walked the halls and I saw they used to use the word crippled kids you know, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I walked the halls of the hospital saying, again, there but for the grace of God go I, and I walked back to my office, and I didn't have any problems. That's what I've been doing for years. It's worked for me. Walk a mile but, in but my shoes. But you usually, when, you're, when your back's to the wall, you know, and you're almost down and out, you must get advice. There's no substitute for good advice. Don't wallow in your own failure. Don't take it personally. You're not the only one that's ever had a problem and didn't make a comeback. They all make, you know, millions of people have made comebacks. So seek out advice. Can't do it all by yourself. And Talia Lita asks, why do we see so many cases of the PETA principle in, base, in, in business? How is it that people manage to fail upward? That hmm. The people principle is yes. that... The more you do, you reach your own level of incompetence. Rise, rise to the level of your incompetence. Why is that still prevalent? And I would say, I think that book was in the 70s, obviously. Uh, yeah. Who was born in Grant's tomb or whatever. <laughs> uh, uh, Peter wrote that, in, I think, in the 70s. Yeah. And I would say it goes back to the hiring and one reason meteoric rises of companies. Example, I have seven people in 1960. I hire an accountant. Now, all of a sudden, we grow. we got 100 people. Now I need, what do I need? I need a, a bookkeeper first, then the accountant, then the controller, then 600 people today. I need a chief financial officer. So in the hiring process, you have to measure capacity. Very, very difficult. How do I get around it? I have industrial psychologists. Cost very little. I've never hired any person in over 50 years of business without an industrial psychologist measuring the capacity so I don't run into the Peter principle. And then number two, I go to their home, I interview the spouse, I interview their kids. I want to let them know this is the biggest decision I'm going to make. Yes, we've got 600 people, but if you fail, nothing happens to me. Have you you, so obviously, care, care. you obviously had some mistakes along the way, oh, people that didn't work. I think we hit about 80%, which is very high. So do you learn from the 20%? That's the number one thing is, is uh, as follows. I wrote a book called We Got Fired, and it's the best thing that ever happened to us, which you happened to, <laughs> oh. I interviewed you. Yeah. And if you don't learn from your mistakes, if you don't learn from, that was the number one theme of the book. Everybody, Lou Holtz got fired, Mayor Bloomberg got fired, you've been fired, put 10 people's picture on the cover, they've all been fired. You must learn something from that experience. And if you don't, then you are a loser. You can't go forward.